When I tell people I'm a data scientist, they assume, first of all, I'm a geek, which may be true, but they assume that I'm just crunching numbers all day. But really, most of my day is spent trying to understand what the data means. That, uh, to a large degree, means maybe pulling some data in, computing some summaries of the data, and then thinking about it. Is, does that make sense? In the past decade, we have had a dramatic explosion of data being collected and retained. What we want to do with this data is try to find some actionable insight. If you think about your everyday life, data is being collected everywhere, from your house and your Nest thermostat, all the way to your shopping experience, browsing, to your body. We now wear sensors in our body that are continuously con collecting the data. The great thing about data science is you can apply these kinds of, this kind of thing that excites me to so many areas. I mean, I, in my career, I've built models for the IRS, tax fraud models, I've built models for, um, major newspapers in the US. I've built them for special forces to identify who will make it through training. And so these are, what do these have in common? They have nothing practically in common except the data that feeds the decisions. Data analytics today is exploding largely because data is exploding. And as organizations collect more data and are able to collect more data, whether it's internal data or external data, uh, data that they never knew existed before, They've been able to coalesce this data and they, now they're striving to find something to do with it. And data analytics provides a way to scale the decisions they make with the size of the data that they collect. In 2020, there is some research that shows that we're collecting 50 times more data than in 2011. And their IBM claims that 92% of the data of the entire world has been collected in the past two years. So what we want to do with this data is find some useful information, that actionable insight that would allow us to do something useful. The story goes that there was a team of analysts in the Midwestern grocery store looking to find some patterns in the data. And they weren't necessarily specifically even trying to do data mining. But what has happened is they realized when men went shopping on Thursdays and Saturdays when they bought diapers, they bought beer. And this is a really interesting story because this kind of information is extremely valuable to this particular grocery store. Because now on Thursdays you can put diapers and beers in a separate um, parts of the store and force your customers to walk through the store and hopefully pick up additional items. And on Saturdays it was a regular shopping trip where you know, it was a cart full of items that would hold you through the week until the next week. Again, it's, it's finding innovative ways to take the data that you have available to you to take the place of that smart person, that marketer who's trying to figure out what's the best way to message people. You can let the data discover these different kinds of patterns for you so that you can scale up. One person can only make so many decisions. An algorithm can make lots of decisions across all these different touch points where shoppers will engage with the brand. One of the advantages we see now that data science has become so popular, you know, the Harvard Business Review calling it one of the sexiest, or the sexiest job of the 21st century. So it used to be we were just geeks in the back office and nobody cared about what we did, and now everybody cares. While we have this data explosion, new technologies are emerging continuously. It's kind of a full-time job just to keep up with all the new technologies that are allowing us to process, sort, organize, and analyze this vast amount of data. So new technologies like Hadoop, machine learning, data mining, and advanced analytics are coming together to form a set of tools and technologies that can help us find insight from this data set. However, while the technologies are getting better, cheaper, and easier to use, there's still a large shortage of people who have expertise and skills to fill these jobs. There's a shortage of about 1.5 million data analysts by 2020, 
Newer reports actually indicate four to five million people with analytical skills are gonna be needed to be able to process, analyze, and find insights from the large amount of complex data. A real hot topic in every conference I go to is skills needed for analytics professionals. Uh, you hear all these surveys about the dearth of data scientists, we need so many more, and there's a certain amount of truth to that. However, that doesn't necessarily mean getting data scientists through an undergraduate or graduate program, which certainly is valuable. But there are lots of people within organizations who have that kind of mindset. When I talk about this, I talk about data science and you know, the skills that you need for data science. So it's like the intellectual curiosity, you need to be business savvy, you have presentation skills and communication skills, be creative and bring these tools together. People with that kind of a mindset who like to ask why, I guess in some ways those are those annoying, annoying people in the organization who are saying, I wonder why that is, and they want to go and investigate and figure it out. There are lots of people in organizations who have that mindset. Those are great potential data scientists because they ask the right questions about the data. Once they have that mindset, there are two main paths of, of learning that uh, I'd like to make sure that all the data scientists that I engage with are, are going down. One is the, the science of data science. So that's the mathematics, the statistics, all those kinds of core techniques, the, the theory behind what works the way they do. But that's not the whole story because data science, effective data science is not just the science, there's also an art to it that you really only learn from experience. In order to become a successful data scientist, you really need a mix of both technical and what we call these soft skills. In the technical side of things, you really need to understand the data. You need to be willing to wrangle the data, be curious about that data, be able to analyze it. On top of that, you need to have good analytical skills. You need to be curious, ask the right question, be able to have good communication skill and talk to your business owner about what is the right business problem we are trying to solve. The hard skills that tend to do better are your mathematics, statistics, engineering, economics, physics, those fields tend to produce people because they're well-grounded in the mathematics and they have a leg up. I've worked with social science and even history majors who think about the data the right way and they have that intellectual curiosity and they are self-starters.